Hi there, this is Just Nigeria coming up on the program. We assess the conduct of the Edo 2020 governorship election. How well did the umpire and security operatives perform? And against all odds, we meet the young lady standing tall despite social misconceptions about her health condition. Plus, my name is Tele Aino. Check me out. The digital business manager using technology to make healthcare affordable and accessible. Welcome to Just Nigeria from the BBC and Channels TV, where we bring you the stories being talked about by the social media generation. I am Wali Fakile. Uh, without further ado, let's start with our top story for today. The Edo State governorship election has come and gone with the incumbent, Godwin Obaseki, declared winner. Some people have described the electoral process as peaceful and commended the umpire for being mostly fair. But how well did INEC and security operators perform? What lessons could be learned from the voting despite the coronavirus pandemic? Ajoka Uluotse has had a chat with some election observers who monitored the polls. The Ado election has come and gone, and for Nigeria, it was the first of many elections to come since the start of the coronavirus pandemic. But how did the Independent National Electoral Commission perform? And what are the lessons to be learned from Saturday's outing? Joining me in a post-election analysis is Cynthia Mbamalu, Director of Programs, Africa, Yaga. Thanks for joining me, Cynthia. Yeah, thank you for having me. I also have with me Okwarachi Jacob, who is a program manager with Sing Nigeria. Thanks for joining me, Jacob. Thank you for having me here. All right, so I'm going to start by asking, let me talk to Cynthia first. Many had expected that on Saturday they were going to see a lot of violence and ballot snatching and misnormals. What did you see on the field? Yeah, and thank you. And so Yaga Africa deployed observers, 543 observers across the 18 LGAs in the state. And we did anticipate violence because our pre-election survey had highlighted about 13 LGAs that were hotspot zone. But let us also remember that a week to the election, the National Peace Committee was here in Edo to have the um, contesting candidates and um, sign a peace accord and commit to peace. Same also the Oba intervened. Um, I think um, the people of Edo wanted to just cast their votes and they wanted their votes to count, which was where elections asked their supporters to um, reduce the spread of violence or the incidence of violence. So I, I think that was very important. And then the other thing is, yes, we did see a large number of individuals at polling units, but by the time the Electoral Commission released its report um, on turnout, we actually have barely 25% turnout in this election. How about social distancing? How, how was that practiced? Yeah, well, face mask was available even at a point free to people, but unfortunately, the usage and the compliance to the COVID-19 protocol was light because even if people were wearing face masks, most were not wearing it properly. Cynthia was talking about, you know, violence, you know, what she witnessed on the field. What's your general assessment? What was it like on the field on Saturday? We had already conducted... Uh, uh, an opinion poll before the election. That is in Nigeria. We ran an opinion poll, and most of the things that we sought to know from our findings were the things that were precipitated in the elections, like vote buying. Vote buying was common in some places, although in some places the issue of vote buying was not there. And we observed that to a great extent there was minimal rigging where people complete a lot of uh, papers and uh, those visible things you see as malpractices or abnormal in elections. Yeah, how much, of, how much of voter education did you see on the field? How educated were the voters? And by that, I mean uh, I, educated about their rights to vote, you know, not sell their votes and every other thing like that. INEC did some work through society and NOA did a lot of voter education across the local government in the state. However, um, when you do, education is supposed to be a longer process. It's not supposed to be the fire, fire brigade approach. 
which is what we saw. So I believe that there's a lot more that can be done. If we want our citizens to appreciate the power of their vote to participate, there's a lot more that can be done. And if we will talk about the outing of, of police, the police force on, on, on that day, how the security agents perform? Wow, the security agents in most of the polling units that we visited with my team were having good conduct. In fact, it was so organized. The, the, the activities of the uh, security agencies were so organized. No harassment of uh, uh, voters, no intimidation of voters from security agencies whatsoever. And on the other hand, they were willing to assist at any point voters and uh, other uh, agents of the uh, electoral process. And, and briefly, do you want to tell me your high points from this election? High points and low points. I, I think for me, the um, high points were the electoral call. There was an improvement from Kogi and Bayosa last year. Um, citizens came out regardless of the challenges and they voted. The other high point for me was that the smart card reader was deployed across board and INEC actually achieved transmission and um, um, uploading the results from the polling units level to the elections result viewing portal. And then we had a peaceful conduct. That for me was a major high point peaceful conduct of the election. Low point for me was late commencement of polls. Um, the fact that election started quite, um, there was late commencement. That's why some of the polls closed at 4.30 p.m. So we hope that INEC could address logistical challenges before ONDO and that they would train their personnel effectively before ONDO also. And, uh, and if there were lessons that INEC would have taken away from this election for subsequent, subsequent elections, what would it be? One, there should be strict observation of the uh, uh, COVID-19 protocol, most especially if the elections will be within this period of the pandemic. Then number two, there should be a strengthened policy from government on vote buying so that it can be curbed. We cannot continue in the excesses of people that are willingly in criminal form, subjugating people to uh, uh, devoid, devoiding them of their conscience. Do, do you think that the elected governor represents the wish of the people? Yes, our PVT, Yaga Africa's PVT verified the outcome, and our estimate actually shows that the win, winning party and the second leading party scored um, the votes, the uh, results released by INEC is indeed a reflection of the vote cast at the polling unit. So we gave our verification statement yesterday, and the estimates actually are consistent with what um, INEC's result is consistent with Yaga Africa's estimates. All right, thank you very much, Cynthia. Thank you very much, Jacob. Thank you so much for, for, for doing this. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. All right, still drawing on the Doe governorship election. Ajoke has also had a chat with Festus Okoye, INEX National Commissioner, who also serves as Head of Information and Voters Education. Have a look. Now, some have deemed the September 19th Edo State governorship election relatively free and fair. While the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has received some thumbs up, it has also received a fair share of knocks for the conduct of that election. Joining me to give an account of INEC's performance in that election is a National Commissioner and Chairman Information and Voter Education Committee, Festus Okoye. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you so much. All right. So let me start by asking you, what did INEC do differently in this election? Well, uh, we, we did a couple of things differently. Uh, one, we deployed additional assets uh, uh, for the conduct of this particular election. Uh, secondly, we deepened the use of technology uh, in the electoral process. And also, we made sure that um, we carried out both physical and online training uh, for our ad hoc staff that conducted this particular election. Some election observers have told me that INEC officials were not seen at their post in some polling units. As at 8.30, that, that INEC had announced voting was going to commence. Now, how, what happened and why, why did we see that kind of incident? 93.97% of all the bully units uh, in a do state uh, opened on or before 8 a.m. In, in the morning. Uh, the second information also indicates that all the registered voters who came to the polling units, no matter the time they came, so long as they came before 2.30 p.m., uh, succeeded in, uh, in, in casting their, ba their ballots. But we, we had challenges in just uh, two registration areas or what you normally call wards. Uh, in these two registration areas, 
some of the ad hoc staff uh, refused to deploy on account of the fact that um, the allowances we are their the, the training allowances we are not we are we are not paid. But that uh, was a communication challenge and was quickly uh, rectified and they deployed. And then there were also in the pockets of pulling units uh, where the escort uh, security officers uh, did not arrive on time and some of the uh, 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 higher vehicles did not arrive on time. As a voter, if I'd arrived at the polling unit at 8.30 and I don't find anyone at that polling unit, I could have walked off. And that m would mean that INEC has disenfranchised me from voting. Couldn't something have been done to rectify these teaching issues? Yes, we, you know, in, in, um, in those days, we had a total of 192 uh, registration areas. And, and uh, this problem took place only in two of those uh, uh, reg registration areas. I completely agree with you that some of these things ought to have been sorted out uh, before elections. But, you, you know, if we sorted it out in 190 uh, uh, registration areas and also high challenges in two pulling units, um, it's, it's not, not really significant. But it is a lesson that we have taken on board. We are going to conduct the under governorship election on the 10th day of October. And uh, the resident electoral commissioner for that state and the supervising national commissioner uh, have been instructed not to allow the issue of training allowance. Uh, Ria says. Without doubt, this is the first state election to be conducted by INEC since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria. But observers have said to us that COVID-19 protocols were not duly followed in some of the units that they, 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 they observed. Uh, on the part of the commission, we made sure that we provided uh, a, a face masks for all our ad hoc staff. We made sure that we provided hand sanitizers to all of them. We made sure that we provided disinfect disinfectants for all the pulling units and methylated spirit for our smart card readers. And in so many of the pulling units, we also had an inner and outer cordon to demarcate uh, uh, where persons ought to be on, on, a, on, election, on election day. And we also provided the infrared thermometers to all the pulling, all the pulling units uh, in, in, in those days. Unfortunately, some of our people uh, refused to uh, observe uh, physical distancing at the pulling units, and we are surging on the presiding officers. Some of the presiding officers got overwhelmed. Uh, some of them, we, we are only wearing the face mask or face covering when they approach uh, the presiding officer to vote. The moment they come out from the uh, uh, voting com uh, compartment, they just simply remove their uh, face mask. Now, some Nigerians say that, you know, the result of this election could have been born out of a recent visa ban by the US and the UK for anyone who is found tampering with the result of an election? The only thing we have done, and our only remit and concern, is that we got our processes right. We have harvested all the positives from this particular election. We have also harvested all the negatives. We are going to improve on, the, uh, on, on our processes and our procedures. And where we recorded negatives, we are going to make sure that we pluck all those loopholes uh, so that we, uh, at the end of the day, uh, the vote we have the value and the votes of the people uh, uh, we count. All right, last, let me ask you some of the strongest lessons INEC has learned from this election. We, we've learned a, a few lessons from this particular election. One is that early planning strategic and strategic planning and deploying tactically and strategically is important to achieving success in any election. Uh, secondly, we have also learned that inclusiveness and consultation breaks down uh, areas of suspicion. And the third and more important lesson is that when the electoral management body and the security agencies uh, have some synergy in terms of delivering uh, free, fair, and transparent elections, uh, that the result and the outcome will be and represent the wish of the people. All right, thank you very much, sir. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much. So what do you make of the just-concluded Edo State governorship election? Do let us know on Twitter at Just Nigeria TV. Still ahead here on Just Nigeria from the BBC and Channel TV. She is bold, beautiful and relentless. We meet the young lady daring to live fully, despite cases of stigmatization due to a health condition. That story in a moment. Do stay with us.